Hello everyone, uh, my name is Faith Motegi and Parenting Conundrums is my platform and um, a discussion that I would like us to have for today is about our children's mental health. I'm not talking about depression, we're not there yet, don't, don't lose hope. I'm not talking about, uh, for now we may not go de too deep into matter suicide, that will be a discussion for another day. Uh, but I just want to focus on children's mental health. Um, the very fact that we are, are facing a pandemic, um, some experts, some opinion shapers have mentioned that it feels like we are at war. And we are at war with ourselves, with everyone else around us, and with this invisible thing that has just flipped our entire script. It hit us very early in the year new school year uh, so there it was new friends new teachers new, maybe others it's new school it was new uniform for others which <laughs> i think you may need to either donate uh those those um school uniforms to someone else because the children may have outgrown it but aside from all that the the children need to be taken care of in more ways than one and I believe you know that. It's just I'm here uh, for support, here for information purposes, here to brainstorm on a few things that just to give you pointers on how we can navigate through this uh, pandemic. So mental health, it's the general well-being of an individual, how they react to situations around them, their experiences. Um, they use different coping mechanisms. Coping mechanisms, basically, you he keep on hearing these words over and over again, especially with the, within the, the psychology uh, fraternity. Uh, so basically, your mental health is your well-being, how you regulate your emotions, how you you take you you what you go through your thoughts, you how do you internalize or and also express your thoughts and your feelings. So basically, it's your emotions, your thoughts, and your behaviors. How do you work around uh, overwhelming emotions, overwhelming thoughts that now translate into what is now the visible action, in which case this is our behaviors. So right now, you, you have been with your children for a long time. You've been in the house. You're trying to do some uh, schoolwork. You're trying to help them with the chores. You're trying, you're trying your best. And as I always say, I give you my virtual hug for that. But now it's now we go a step further. That. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm, not Corona. <laughs> now that's our new reality. Once you clear your throat, whether it's allergies or which is the case for me, you have to put a disclaimer, which your children may keep doing. Um, that's their way of, of, of coping. So I just want to put some few pointers. Please take a deep breath, a deep and release um if you have tried some things they're not working please be reevaluating on a weekly basis ask your children like by the way is there something and that we can do that <clears throat> excuse me that you'd like us to do that will help you uh, manage your day better such that not everything is on your shoulders so in this war that we are in uh, we are not physically fighting, we are mentally fighting. And if we don't put on the quote-unquote armor, the right armor, <clears throat> pardon me for my ah, allergies, it decides to show up ah, the wrong time. Anyway, moving on swiftly. So we need to protect ourselves. Um, there are three major mental health uh, disorders or mental health issues that I want to really focus on, not really focus on, but to give you a highlight that you need to be aware of. Uh, as I mentioned, the others, the in-depth ones that we can do another time. So please subscribe and thank you for those who have uh, subscribed. Please share. And also you can follow me on faithmotegi.wordpress.com. I'll be, I'll be putting my blog post on such matters. So there's something called anxiety disorders. This is where a child is on their anxiety levels are at a high, are higher than usual. This is where you can mention about separation anxiety. They don't want you leaving the house. They don't want you gone for too long. Um, and just let's be cognizant of the fact that children worry about others, especially the younger ones. They usually worry about their family, uh, relatives, 
more than themselves. So they need to know where you're going. And some of them may feel like the outside world is a dangerous place because of everything that has been put on, on air. So by the time you're having these anxiety disorders, that is one of the things that you have. You yourself as an individual may have anxiety disorders because everything seems to have just fallen on your shoulders or just fallen apart. So basically, you're looking, even by the time I mentioned this, look at yourself and also look at your child. The other is the eating disorders. Oh dear, dear. The fridge, the snack bar, the fruits, I don't know what you may call it, but food has become an escape for most of us. When we want to pass time, we'll go for the snack. When we are watching a movie, which we are doing often enough, or we're watching programs, we are snacking. Uh, it basically, after every few minutes, you're wondering, did the fridge uh, magically um, make or have something that wasn't there five minutes ago? We are eating more than we usually do. And the children are not running as they did because of school or the activities that they did uh, after school, they are not they are not burning off that energy. The same case with us as 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 adults. So there might be an issue with eating disorders. So there's the anxiety. You can try to alleviate your anxiety by eating. It becomes comfort a comfort food. So one thing that we need to look at is how are we our eating patterns generally. The other one is post-traumatic stress disorder. As I mentioned earlier, we are at war with an invisible enemy. And the main part that is engaged 24-7, because even at night it has its own things, is the mind. So, post-traumatic stress disorder, whereby even after the fact, even after the pandemic has, has uh, is, is gone, we are still on alert mode if you can look into the aspect of soldiers or those who have been who have uh, been exposed to war you will see that there are some behaviors that follow suit so those are the three things that um where we are most likely can crop up if we do not put some measures uh in place so this is these are some of the tips that can help you as a parent as a guardian to take care of your child's mental health yours too because they copy from you or they feed off your energy so let's explore a few of them okay the first one routine 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 i'm not saying you become a military institution i'm not saying you go all a fun day on your children this is the wrong time to do that because everybody is all clenched up anxiety mode routine mean is let me put it this way Children thrive on predictability. There's a phrase I came across and I love that phrase. The same case even with you as an individual. So children thrive on predictability. Include them in, we, are, we need to do homework. We need to do house chores. They need to know by the time they are waking up, this is what I need to do. Such that it's not just free for all. Because free for all now can now lead to the snacking, can lead to the tantrums where I am bored. And you have no idea where to take your child. Okay? So, you have the, the routine. Then, we have stress management techniques. And I don't even, let me even put it that way. It is how do you relieve your stresses. Put yourself, not put, imagine yourself as a pressure cooker every emotion is a form of energy that's why when you're happy you feel like dancing okay that was not dancing was it so when you you're happy you have you want to sing you want to to shout you want to dance when you're angry you clench your fists everything is just mm -mm, don't you dare touch me when you are anxious you just feel like they are those what are they called butterflies in the stomach i do not know whether butterflies have humans in the stomach but that's a story for another day um you feel the stress you there's a song where naskia kichwa kichwa Tumbonam, gongo, all that, like your, your, you have uh, what illnesses or aches and pains all over your body because every emotion is energy. So if you're not finding a way to release that energy in a positive way, not punching somebody, punch a pillow, punch the chapati fla, punch what? No, step on the duvet as you wash it, or even get that carpet out and just smash everything out not beating somebody up 
but you need to express your emotions in a positive way. This is something you have to teach your children. I have kept on repeating in the previous video, they need emotional, emotional intelligence. They need to know how to identify, how to acknowledge, and how to express and communicate their emotions. So that is can be a topic of the day. You can even pick out some pictures and let them do, how are you feeling today? Sad. How are you feeling today? Bored. So what do you do when you're bored? It becomes a discussion. What do myself as a parent, myself as a guardian, I can also share age-appropriate content on how to deal with the emotion. Okay? I want point number three. Catch your child doing good. Right now, our eyes are trained like this on children's mistakes. Like, you do not want things to fall apart. But my dear, things are falling apart. So, catch them doing good. Like, what? Today you shared your toy with your brother. Today you cleaned up. I'm so proud of you. Today you finished your clearing without even me having to tell you. Yay! You can give them a hug. You can give them a, a, a special meal. Find a way to reward your child. Catch them doing good more than you catch them doing bad or with a cookie, with a hand in a cookie jar, like mistakes, mistakes. Such that the record of good is more than the one that is bad. Because... If they are only seeing themselves being at fault every single time, then it doesn't help with their stress levels and their anxiety. They'll go for the food, they'll go for the tantrums, they'll go for everything else, or they'll say that I am not loved, which is not a place we want to go. Mm -mm, we don't. Then we have the aspect of, so I've said about find ways to, to um, catch them good, find ways to, um, to let the pressure out of the pressure cooker, and routine, routine, routine. Another is you have to find ways to connect with friends and relatives. This is where technology comes into place. This is where calling their teacher comes into place. Let them not feel like they're in this island by themselves and they have no idea where everybody is. If the teacher is willing, call in advance. Tell her, tell him, tell them they would like to see to talk. Even though yes, they have seen on Zoom. If it can be one-on-one, -on -one, very good. If your child is away from their friends, get in touch with the parents if you're able to. In number Nyumbakumi, hopefully you have numbers of those of your, your child's friends. Let them uh, uh, see each other. Let them call and let them know that by the way, at our way, you've come and been taken to my grandmother, even me, I'm at my grandmother's place or whatever the case. But let them realize that by the way, I'm not in this by myself. It's not my mom has just put me in this place or sent me so far and I'm like, hmm. I am by myself. No, let them connect with their grandparents, their parents, or whatever, because of the distances. We don't know what has happened. We have been contained. We have, uh, the travel plans have been changed. Essential services connect in one way or the other. So basically, I don't want to keep this video too long, but it is the very fact that you have to be cognizant of your child's, um, behaviors if something has changed if they are not being as expressive as they was i'm not telling you that you now start saying pass my child oh it is the end of the world no it is have a conversation with your child and this is a time when we pass on our coping skills the positive ones and we tell them that sometimes things don't go as planned and we do not always roll on the floor. We don't yell at others because it doesn't help. And you find a way of, yes, you're anxious. Yes, you're sad. Yes, you have missed out on so many celebrations, birthdays, graduations, just general play. But my dear child, I'm here for you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you don't, you're not able to talk to me one on one. You can write it down. You can even have a diary. You can even have a suggestion box in the house, like you can suggest, or basically have a family meeting. This is the point where you look at each other's strengths and you maximize on that, and then you see how do you support each other, such that by the time the pandemic is coming, you are a stronger family unit than you came in. Because the only way through the emotion uh, to get over emotions is through it. But how do you do it? Positively or negatively? And a child needs to know that. And who will, will be the best teachers of now? You.
are the best parent. You are the best teacher. And you're the best role model at this point in time. So just be gentle with yourself. Uh, re get rid of the perfect scenarios that you have. And then work on your child's mental health. I believe this will be a topic that we will be coming in over and over again. But we will see how best we can work on your child's mental health and yours too. And we find the best way forward. Okay? So thank you. Please subscribe. Please share. Please comment. Give me um, a, a thumbs up telling me, yes, this is a good job. Um, if there are any discrepancies, any questions, I'm here for you. If I don't have the answer... I will ask and I will get back to you, okay? So thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.